Yo, yeah, what's up? It's B-Boy Stretch, originally from South Africa, but um, worldwide right now, spent some time in Italy, lived there, loved it, I will go back. I'm here in San Francisco right now, and we're gonna go over Flair Air Flair for you guys, so let's jump in. I recommend that people have cartwheels, good handstand, windmills, turtles, circles, which is the wind up of the air flare. Nick calls this the bowl effect. The steps for flare and air flare we already discussed in my own YouTube tutorials. Check them out right here. Remember your body's going to go through a lot of different stages and phases when you're training this move. It's a high level move. I would work flare and air flare together because they complement each other. It's also a very similar technique and the strength that you gain from one translate into the other move and vice versa. Flare high at the back on all of your flares so that you train your body to stay up high. That way you never have to struggle when you're going up to the 90 or the air flare at the back of the flare. As you kick for the wind up your legs must actively lock into a widened position. Don't ever relax the legs or you'll lose momentum. The air flare catch after the flare can also be a big challenge. Just keep in mind that the catch is the easiest if you have enough wind up beforehand. This will help with getting speed for the throw, which can also make balancing easier once your throwing hand is landed. A good goal to have in mind when starting your flare training is to get at least 10 to 15 of them, and then get about 10 to 15 rounds of air flare. If you can do these two, your body should be built strong enough to link flare to air flare for about 30 seconds to a minute. This is an exercise I do every single day and you keep it with your entire b-boy career and lifetime. As someone who's been in the game since the late 90s, I can confidently say that it's the perfect way to maintain your body and power ability. I'm 30 years old now and I've learned that aging as a power head means nothing's for free. You don't wake up being able to flare without a warm up anymore. As you once did when you're young, you sort of roll out of bed and just do this thing. So I do a lot of stuff to strengthen the lats and force the lats to support the shoulder girdle. That's a very important concept. My shoulders almost rely completely on the lats. It serves as a solid frame. This allows me to maintain good form even in the most unnatural positions in power moves. So you can use the gym to help you quite a bit with your power moves. Once a week I do power lifting with my power moves without breaks or rest in between. It's a total body workout that involves bench press, clean and jerk, squats, low rows, lat pull down, hamstring curls, reverse lunges, deltoid lateral raises, concentration curls and other clever exercises in the gym. I typically cycle this training in intervals. When I begin reconditioning I train this exact regimen for four weeks on and then I take two weeks off. Then I get back on for six weeks then I rest for about four weeks. The reason why I do this systematically is because you're going to need proper time to recover your immune system, recover your, your body, your muscles and your joints. It's very important to take care of yourself in this way because you want to put on a lot of strength but you don't want to put on a lot of weight. It's all about power to weight ratio so it's not about aesthetics, what you look like. You know, muscles are for magic mic. What we want is functional strength. Some common mistakes with the flares is that people don't draw circles with their feet. Don't use the gymnast method of flare that relies only on the quads. When you flex these muscles it creates a scissor like motion that leads to a very choppy poor form when you're doing a b-boy type of a flare. You want to keep circular motion in your feet and your hips, keep your legs wide and firm. The last thing I want to say is that there's a lot of great advice out there, a lot of great tutorials but ultimately it's up to you to get out there and train and train hard. Be smart about it. Choose a nice floor when you're starting out a move. You don't want to always go on a padded floor because it's going to teach you only that technique and you have to translate to a hard floor when you're in competition or whatever it may be. But my point is that there are so many options out there that the details may confuse you and cause you to not even try. Although there are definitely some great tutorials out there, I'd encourage everyone just to go out and begin to learn through trial and error. Since we all learn differently and have varied body types, you might not need to work on certain things as much as the next guy. So guys, thanks for watching. You've got all the secrets and tips that you need now. All you need now is to go out there and have fun and train the thing. So, 
you can check me out on this link, subscribe, go ahead. You can also check out more videos and variety of tutorials on this link, Joel TV, subscribe as well. Hope to see you out there at battles, workshops, competitions, whatever it may be. Have fun. Oh joy, more people. Shut the f up! <laughs> There's always a door like we get through and like... <laughs> I know. Shut the f up! I'm sorry guys, I'm watching. No, no, no worries. No worries. <laughs> Alright, ready? Okay. Off time. So... <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha.